is uh, what? Half past four. Half, Half past, past four. four in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, the rock and roll train has taken off. That's right, we're on our way to the airport. Airport, domestic. Yes, that's the one we want. Keep going through the lights. After they turn green. There's Vaughan driving the, <laughs> the rock and mobile. Matt there. Right here, the handsome fella right here is uh, Elias. His <laughs> shreds. Shreds, sorry. Yeah, and then there's me. Good. You've just revealed my uh, <laughs> true identity. Oh, no. <laughs> you would never guess my secret. Oh, my goodness me. We've got superheroes in this car. The Shredder Man. My goodness me, there's other people up at 4 30 in the morning. I know, and that's a really weird thing about so ball. many cars. It's it's like it's like it's do they not have a life? <laughs> they might be coming home from metal gigs. Oh, well, that's probably it. Yeah. But it's really a waste of time because, well, Grey Forsaken wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we were thinking. <laughs> so, yes, we're on the way to the uh, airport. And we're flying over to Sydney for the Black Stump Festival, and this is the first part of our, well, Grey Forsaken TV mini documentary of our journey. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty exciting. The five of us, uh, Simon's not with us because Simon is taking a later flight. He's, I think, a little bit wiser. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nah. I remember when we booked the flight, we were like, look, we're just going to get through that. 4.30 start, well, here we are, guys. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> We're just getting through it, and I'll tell you, just <laughs> So, it's pretty exciting. What do you think, um, Matty, Mr. Skippy, Skippy Worth? Skippy Worth. <laughs> 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 I think that one's gone. Uh, <laughs> Skippy Worth, we're just swirling it, okay? <laughs> What, what are you? And over here on base we have Matt Skippyworth. Skippyworth. <laughs> oh no, I've ruined it for you now. I've ruined that. Yeah. Okay, what's your thoughts on the on this whole uh, journey, brother? Are you actually asking me now? Yes. <laughs> uh, very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. And that's probably the, the big word for it. Uh, just. Anticipation is very high. All right, this is check-in. Checking in our oversized baggage. Yes. And see this? This big one right here, full of merch. Full of merch. Yeah. Merch that we'll probably end up bringing back. <laughs> we'll end up paying like more for oversize. <laughs> then I'll... <laughs> So yes. How much was yours? Skippy. Uh, two kilos or 25 kilos. So this would tell me how accurate my scales are. Yeah. Because I know what I think mine weigh. So Matt's already paid $20 in overweight. I think it was the guitar, mate. The new bass. See, my new bass is lighter than the sound gear. I love sound gear. <laughs> I swear it's lighter. So we're just waiting for the check-in. Big shreds there. It doesn't matter now, as long as we go and Shredder pillow. That, that was the key to get the seats. That was that was the key factor. What's so key about it? Well, we want to sit with each other, don't we? On the plane. So we actually almost missed out. Oh, that's right. That's why I knew we had that's to get here as close to five. Nearly an hour and a half early. And uh, we're just we're, we're just fortunate free. that there was C and D free from where you guys were. Yeah. So it wouldn't have been a problem if we had a whole book put together. Alright, so we've just gone through the uh, handed in our luggage. Heading up into the, they, they've the let us, They're letting us out of Perth. Yes, I know. Elliot's shreds are letting you through. What's yeah, going man. on? Yeah, man. It's American. And Matt's all stoked. Look at him in his Foo Fighters shirt. Band I dreamed of went on a plane and going on tour and it's now the third time we've done it. So Rock thoughts, on. thoughts, come on, tell um, me. Excited, just I can't believe that we're actually here. Um, it's a massive, massive amount of work and money to do a gig, but it's all in the name of putting the band out there, taking a new place and showing we're serious. Yeah, and having fun, you know. Absolutely. So we got Here money, we go. Putting the money in. Just <laughs> doing what we do, you know. So, yeah, my thoughts are um, 
<laughs> you bring it on, and here's to many, many more with this lineup. Many, many more. We're on the plane at last. <laughs> Hey boys. On the plane at last. Oh, got a good view there, Hell. Time is about that and a bit more. Just on, getting on to 6 o'clock. 6 a.m. <coughs> Comfy little seats. Everyone's got their sleeping and reading materials and pretty much ready to roll. Yes. What book are we reading? Um, Kiss and Sell. It's, it's like an unauthorised guy, but book by um, their former tour manager. So there we go, we can see that uh, the lawn is very widely read with a lot of different texts and he's a huge KISS fan. There you go. As Couldn't half tell. And that's actually coincidental, it's just because it's very cold in Perth this morning so I put on my, my KISS army hoodie that I bought the other day. But um, yeah, it's so far a very interesting read actually as a KISS fan. Range read. Alright, so this is it. Yeah, we're, we're on the way. There's literally no turning back now. And <laughs> it's all good. Everything worked out. Anything that's not packed now, we just. Nothing we can do. Do with it later. <coughs> just have to do with it later, exactly. So the plan today is to arrive in Sydney. Head down to um, <coughs> my friend Mark's house, which is down near Cronulla. So there'll be a bit of training and all that kind of thing. And then we're pretty much free agents for the next day and a half. We can yeah. chill out and relax. Looking forward to that. Head down to um, Circular Key and all that tomorrow. So always nice to get back to Sydney. We're just talking about next album. Next album? Yeah. As in, like, finishing mutilator well it's been a um we've been working on it a long time and i think i think we're going to have had yeah we're just we're just discussing how the timeline to get it out because um it's getting released in january so we need to get cracking and finish it and spend a bit of time in the studio you know immediately after this but we're getting um getting quite a few gigs and stuff so the the train ride continues you know one of these days we'll learn our lesson and just actually stop not like stop stop the van but we'll actually stop for a few months and give ourselves a rest but the way shreds and i work um we don't we don't stop we kind of think okay we just completed that massive job what massive job can we start now <laughs> so Elias and I are having one of our famous one of our famous chats about technical difficulties <laughs> there's always technical difficulties <laughs> but you don't you don't last for five years in this business if um, if you can't troubleshoot a few problems so um it might seem to people out there like we just pump the albums out and it's all a bit breezy, but a lot of work goes into it. A hell of a lot of work goes into it. <laughs> I'm a bit beat. Might be going for a sleep soon. Yeah, I think we've all probably been lucky to have maybe three hours sleep. I got to sleep by about midnight. Uh, How about you? Uh, I got to sleep, but I got home, packed the rest of my stuff. Probably got even got to sleep about 11 o'clock. Yeah. So we're all sort of firing on not many cylinders at the moment. Yeah. And I so hopefully see when we get there we can get some um, sleep here, yeah, Matt's Matt. gone for the world. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Matt, Matt likes his sleep. Uh, Matt was saying last night on the way back from practice that um, he was very um, excited but also anxious. So he was hoping that uh, when I dropped him off home last night that he could actually get to sleep. Because you know, it's, you know, like when you're a little kid in a way, and yeah, you yeah. need Christmas and things like that, and I before you can't get to sleep because you're too excited. I think he was at that stage where he was, you know, with the experiences of the last uh, the last couple of uh, trips to Sydney. Um, he's more excited because, well, 
because it's a much more relaxed atmosphere this time. It is, it's, um... And it's really, really cool. I mean, the thing that you were saying to me, Vaughn, about like when we were hand, you know, going in and booking in for our flight, how the, uh, the lady at the counter was saying how for a band that was so cool and calm and collective and things like that, I think, I think that's very important. Uh, it's part of, of showing that we know that we're not in control, that God's in control. So, yeah, you know, and I really... You've got to keep very level on these things because yeah. emotions run high. Yeah, absolutely. Tired, and I think as long as, as long as we focus on, on that and that we wouldn't be here, here doing what we're doing if it wasn't for God, um, I think the week, the, the, the five days, they're going to run fine, doesn't matter what happens. It's going to be a whatever. You know, it's like water off a duck's back. If something goes wrong, something goes wrong. Be quite something amazing. goes right. Fantastic. Um, as long as we focus on why we're there at Black Stump. And, uh, well, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Yeah, and, no, you'll uh, enjoy it. Um, let's just not let things ruin it for us, I suppose. <laughs> well, we're coming in Sydney. Sydney, Australia. Yeah. Oh, is this still Australian? Oh, man, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was overseas. Oh, we didn't tell you that. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. So this is an international one? Uh, I think we've got everything that I've seen to count for, and they haven't beaten up my base case that I can tell. Last time I flew, it didn't end up so good at the other end. Watch, we're, we're catching the train where we're catching it to. Oh, look at all this. My goodness. Uh, Oh, we got the Sydney map. Okay. We need to get to Walleye Creek Station and Drymere Station. Well, I've had to say that this is our first, uh, oh, well, you could say hiccup. Um, not realising the price of, of trains, you know. Uh, we get to the airport and go and catch a train, and over fifty dollars for four tickets. It's uh, pretty steep, but that's life. Give me a. And the tour shirt. Yeah, I didn't understand. Oh, I'm gonna fit in. <laughs> so Rich is our newest member. Right. Tony is the geek. Ah. Uh, um, do I need to press something? No, I think we're right. Um, we've Just got a... Watch your hand there, especially for a little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where's the last one? I thought there were five. 
Yeah, well, he's came in on a later plane. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that. I thought you were all coming at once. Yeah, we would have liked to have. But, um, <laughs> no, I'm really definitely not getting out on this side. We're all way. It'll be a, quite a big fall. So we finally caught the train. We're in, is it Gimia? You think? Gimea. 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 We're in Sydney. And, um, We've just been picked up by Mark. Staying at his place. It's a uh, uh, nice place. Take note of the restaurants because we could be eating here a few times over the next couple of days. Oh, beauty! There's an Indian, there's a deli, we've got burgers. Oh, we've got a little uh, charcoal chicken. People is, um, we're looking, we're, we're in Gaimia now at my friend Mark's house, so. Yeah, this is our facility, and it's so nice just to have a, a home base. It's so nice, and um, yeah, we're just trying to find how far away it is to get to um, the local Westfield, which is a bit like Carousel. Bigger, bigger. So that's what we're doing, people. And Matt's excited. He gets Matt's, to go shopping. Matt if he's really, really happy, there might be a JB <laughs> Hi-Fi. There is. <laughs> uh, I'm just. I'm kind of curious to see what else is there, actually. Maybe, and maybe they have some JB Hi-Fi. And maybe they have our albums there. Yeah. Okay. If, they, if they've got their al our albums there, I have to buy something from JB. Okay. If it's about. Else that's good. It looks like it's about a two k oh. walk, guys. Sounds two good. Days, no worries. Let's do it. Second day we're in Sydney, so we're going for a bit of a field trip into the city, aren't we? That is correct. Yeah. Um, what you can say it's quite, it's very humid here today, way hotter than it is in Perth. Yeah. So, a bit of a shock to the system, the heat over here. Normally, I Perth's think I'm the, I'm the only smart one, well, me and Matt are the only smart ones who bought some shorts. Oh, Simon brought some as well. I, I, I bought shorts at BW yesterday, does that count? So you bought shorts? He literally bought, he, he actually, we brought shorts, he bought shorts. Came with a hat as well, might come in handy today. I didn't think to bring a hat either. So, you just don't normally come to um, the East Coast 
expecting it to be warmer than on the west coast. But that's we've had such a cold winter in Perth. Hurricane's got something to do with the dust storm as well. I think it's been warmer over here in general this, this year than what it has back home. I don't know. But, um, well, I'm excited. This is my first time in Sydney. And I've never ever seen the Opera House in its own. It's a pretty majestic building, I've got to say. I think it's a great building. Like whenever you're at Circular Quay, you feel like you're sort of in the centre of Australia. I reckon it's very iconic. The whole place is just iconic. You feel like I'm the Guardian Industries. You're in Sydney with us, man. It's fantastic to have you with us. Yes. Got here yesterday. No, two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah, she got here before us. Yeah. yeah. This is a uh, yesterday wandering around and getting lost. So I can do it again today with friends. Oh, okay. So it's going to be the blind lady and the blind. Well, I roughly know where to go, just not where specific places are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's going to be a great weekend. Lex Dump. Some fantastic bands on the lineup. Definitely. I've brought my video camera along as well. Oh. I've only got one battery though, which is a yeah, we'll so couldn't go. find the spares. Yeah. Spares. Never can find them when you need them. Nope. Oh, look at this. Here's the boys waiting at the lights. <laughs> This is Matthew Skitworth eating an octopus. 
the same as what Matt had, but I'm going to give it a go. because they put, uh, there's the holes they cut in the wall to put the cannons in uh, are a little bit too small so the cannons actually don't go in there all the way out so if you fired it you would deafen yourself so that's Australian ingenuity for you I flow and celebrate as you are restored to your intended strength the love of God is restored your heart and soul the message of the north wind it has taken hold rise this to Black Stump on the train. Big Vaughan seen the, the it, map. It's 16 stations, but it, it won't be every single station. So. 
So where are we going? How, how are we going along this trip, Matt? We're going from Gaimia to... To Fairfield. 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 Fairfield.
You know, we're, we're trying to navigate ourselves around somewhere that we really don't know well, anything I've never about. Been here in my life before. I mean, I think we're in Fairfield. I mean, they've got exactly the same sort of stuff as what we do in Perth, but... got no sense of bearing. Or yeah, that's or right. I mean, every street looks the same to me. Yeah. Um, and it, it does take a toll after a while. I don't think that we could probably last any longer than five days here. I mean, missing our family and um, friends over back in Perth and just... It is, it is underneath it, it is quite a bit of stress trying to get yourself sorted oh, yeah. out. I mean, I myself have had to learn to cope with that stress. Yeah. Um, and I'm taking this tour much better. But, yeah. in fact, it's been the best tour ever for me in terms of I, I haven't had any stress headaches yet, which has been nice. But it, it, at the so same time, it's still that we've, it's almost like we've got some, some weight on our shoulders as well. Like, oh, yeah. And the underlying fact is that we're performing tonight. And, but this whole Blackstone thing isn't just about our performance on the night. It's the whole the whole weekend as well because we've got our merchandise there. We've got our CDs, our T-shirts, you know, all that sort of stuff. And Are you trying to say it's all about us? It's all about God. It's all about God. And part of... Part of our mission is to get our music and, and merch out, not so that we can... It is a way so we can be publicised, but publicised so that people will see that listen. we're serious about doing we'll this that, for God. Yeah, and they'll listen to the lyrics and they'll be uplifted by the lyrics. Yeah, I and, agree um, totally. I agree totally. It's so hard playing this style of music, metal music, in a society that looks down upon people if they're trying to bring Christianity into it. Yeah. You know, and I no doubt that we'll have quite a few people in the crowd today that aren't Christian and probably will at times look at the music They'll come and think, in with a degree of cynicism. Yeah. You know, a lot of people seem to think that, that metal music is just purely death and you know, all all that evil sort of stuff, you know. It's not always about that, you know, there is ways of being able to put a message across that's quite positive. Well, what I've always aimed to do, but yeah. that's for realism, but it's positive and, you know, wouldn't be here after all this time if we didn't mean that. So what's happening, Vaughn? Um, we're going to try to, we're trying to find it's Gabby, so who's Pete's wife. <laughs> and I just try to call him Pete, but he's not answering his phone. Bring Jason. I don't have his number on my phone. Um... What? So there's somebody already here. Yeah, there's somebody we know who's already here and they're talking about us camping near them. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So awesome. We're here! Yeah. Matt, what are you expecting from uh, um, time at Blackstone? I think pr probably the first thing, um, and probably the most important thing, is just awesomeness. Because you're an awesome guy. Well, we're an awesome band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I actually, I, I really don't know what to expect because we've been twice before it, um, it happened. I just don't know how different it's going to be. So, you know, you almost like try not to get too many expectations. But, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of trying to keep it as expectation free and just, you know, do the best we can and rock on and just enjoy ourselves. I see you're wearing one of the new Grave shirts. Yes. Turn around, show the back. Tour 2009. Mostly because, yeah, I thought it was a nice travelling kind of shirt rather than, well, as long as it's because we got three of them being worn by four mem five members of the band, you know, three out of five is pretty significant. <laughs> Thank you. 
Smells around here. Matt, did you put deodorant on today? Yep, it's horse deodorant. It's horse deodorant. Uh, I thought it was very aromatic. <laughs> nah, it's really because we're, we're, horses are usually kept, eh? Shreds. Ah, uh, what? This is where all the horses are kept. Really? Yeah. This is their stables. Ah, oh, this thing. This is why I wanted to be here early. Hey. This is what we need. Something like this. This would be great. Guys, I love your shirt. Where'd you get them from? Made it myself. <laughs> We're at the main stage now. Apparently it's pretty huge. Yeah. Maybe next year. We'll be at the main stage next year. Oh yeah. Maybe the year after. And we when we pack the pack yeah. the place out, all five thousand seats. Wait a second, sorry. Leave your change from a purchase for someone else to use. Oh, what's oh, this one? Oh, welcome party for random people as they are at stump. Yeah, let's do that! That'd be wicked! Where was ours? Yeah. Can premeditate acts of kindness. Call or SMS an old friend who is not at stump just to let them know you're thinking of them. I'm going to be able to do that too. Right. Offer a stranger some encouragement. Ooh. Offer someone a ride home. Is there a stump who are worried about how they'll get home? Would that that's be us? us? Yeah, that's... I mean, the flats would be alright, but it's a long walk from here to Fairfield. Oh. Oh. Wow, look at this. Hey! It says Monday, but it's actually Friday. Metro tent in Exordium, Delithian. Those who endure, Grave Forsaken, 855. So, Metro tent. We look on the map, we had a look at the garage a little bit later on, and the main stage. And the Metro tent's up here. So, we're going to go and try and find. You can see there's a lot of these um, little cards here. Take a lost person where they need to go. Good advice. Smile, laugh and be happy. It's contagious, absolutely. And here we go. The metro tent. Bigger tent than the other one we were in. So we're getting set up, it's a pretty big stage. Big speakers. Gonna be exciting. They're here, Vaughn. Yeah, here we are. Wow, this should be good. This Massive, there's still heaps and heaps and heaps of people coming in, so it's, it's going to be good hopefully. We'll build up as the night goes on, it should be a really, really good night, we're hoping. 
Yeah. Yeah. Are you feeling nervous? A little bit. Yeah. I think it'll be great. It's hey. gonna be a good night. We just gotta go out there and have fun. Just like do our thing. Absolutely. The best of it. Yeah. I'm waiting to hear you guys tonight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was nice. Very good. I actually haven't heard a lot of the Enix Open stuff. So it's sort of here in live. Yeah. Okay. We have pizza for the evening, we're here tonight, I want to see you going crazy, we're here to have a good time, we're here to play some metal. Okay, this is the title track of our new album, this day forth, I'm going to be giving some copies out to the crazy people out there. Take it away, Simon. <laughs>
Okay, well the exciting thing is I'm in the tent and I'm sitting in a puddle and it's not because I've wet myself. Unfortunately our lighting is bad. Yes. But this tent, the skylight, <laughs> is not waterproof. <laughs> it's not only got a skylight, it's like... It's <laughs> oh, I got dripped on again. A river running through <laughs> it. <laughs> Can you show us the puddle down here? Just in case you manage to have a bit of light. Yeah, there's some here. Here we go. Yummy uh. puddle. <laughs> splash, splash, splash. Uh, actually, can you squeeze out your socks for us? <laughs> you want to see? <laughs> Ew. Oh, I got to take the joke off because I've got wet arms now. <laughs> As you can see, it's been a paradise. <laughs> Here <laughs> Camp Black Stump. <laughs> <laughs>
but it's good because like nobody could hear Matt and I snoring there. It is sort of added to the symphony. <laughs> symphony of snores. At least it's a manly metal snore. A metal snore. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's he true. goes to the chair, oh. paranoid by Black Sabbath. Oh. Well, you can't get more metal. Well, you can get more metal. Than that. That's not invented heavy metal. He's got the structure. He's got the guitar solo. Got Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, I thought it was actually heavy. Black Sabbath that invented. Well, that song was the quintessential bass by it. Yeah. That song was like the, the now again the pretty serious, pretty quick. So you know, metal. Just go to a toilet break. Go you know for it. I mean? Come back in a minute. So It'll be fine. It's all fine. Capsulated what metal was. To add to what Matt said, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Black Sabbath have been a big influence musically on me. Tony Iommi is a living legend, and when I watch Black Sabbath live. All I did was watch Tony Iommi for two, two hours. I didn't actually notice Geezer, Ronnie, and Vinny. Actually, it wasn't Black Sabbath, it was Heaven and Hell, but... Close enough. It was Black Sabbath, come on. <laughs> Black Sabbath. Well, apparently, we, we caught a bit of flack in Germany with our most recent album for ripping off a Slayer song, which we still don't know. We saw we ripped off. But was the thing just, was, he wasn't intentionally doing it, he was actually trying to rip off Megadeth. <laughs> <laughs> it, was on, it was on Wasting Power, and uh, this review said, the song Wasting Power is such a blatant Slayer ripoff, it's embarrassing. And I which still is, don't know. Which, which is confusing, because it was actually Mother of Harlots. <laughs> <laughs> but so, that was my blatant Slayer ripoff. If anyone knows no the news. risk, you've got to let us know, because we, we've got to find out that song. I'll, I'll admit it. No news, ain't good news, blatant Megadeth ripoff. Well, uh, Mother Harlots, you mate, start the Slayers. Ripoff. But you know what? We could look at it in the sense of like we could be proud that they look at that. I mean, I'd be really worried if they're saying, "Oh man, that was a ripoff of a David Hasselhoff song." <laughs> hey man, David Hasselhoff rocks. <laughs> Huge in Germany, yes. And uh, maybe the Germans would have liked it yes. better. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Oh, funny well, to, to continue what Vaughn was saying, slanders. you know, uh, no news ain't good news. Blatant Megadeth. Uh, Mother of Harlots, Blatant Slayer, This Day Forth, Accidental Anthrax. A that was <laughs> Accidental Anthrax. It was. Simon pointed out to me later that it actually is a Because it's, it, that song's just a madhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so we managed to rip off three of the big four, but um, and then we got told the other night we sounded like Metallica. So I thought it was Bruce Dickinson. No, I look like Bruce oh, Dickinson. Oh, you look like Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> well, well oh, if you're going to rip well. off... If you're going to rip if you're sorry for him. <laughs> if you're going to rip off people, just rip off the best. Yeah. It's worked for them. I mean, but really, there's only seven notes you can use anyway, so... But that, really. Slayer, that Slayer one's going to last. Yeah. Like, that's going to be an in-joke for a long time to come, the Slayer rip-off. But it's just like, the, the review was so... so... final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was good. Hi, I'm reading. I think it's cool how we all had, like, great merch on. I was cold. <laughs> and I bought in the new layer on the shirt. For a minute, the chicken. Have, have the robot and the chicken. Anyway, I was saying, I've nurtured this baby for five years, the band, right? And when it's my baby, I feel I have the right to be the spokesperson. And that was where I said, <laughs> at, at five years old, a baby should be able to walk on its own, unless there's something terribly wrong with it. And then I quipped, look at it, it's retarded. <laughs> and then we all rolled around laughing, and, then, and, much, uh, uh, and, much, uh, uh, and much jocularity was had. It was. I gotta say, that didn't work. <laughs> so that's, why, and that's why it's... That, that's, that's the first... Well, I, I know, but like, that was the first time I heard it, and I just... I didn't, yeah. It was it was funnier the first time. It was. You, as I said, we can't <laughs> <laughs> You can't recreate these things. I, know, I, 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 try. I just wanted to say that you're right. I am agreeing with you. It was I mean it really needed to be funnier the first time. <laughs> Re Reenactment. Reenactment going on. <laughs> Completely you do. I was unimpressed. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's something that was over in less than 10 seconds originally, and how much footage have you recorded so far on this? We could do a whole episode of GFTV <laughs> on this joke. This there is was... all GFTV episode 9632 <laughs> explaining the joke. Explaining it's the hard joke. baby <laughs> making of. <laughs> 
conception of a bad idea. <laughs> All of us are one. It's part one. Richard tries to reenact the joke. <laughs> Okay, so we're, it's Monday morning now and we're, um, we're back in Sydney and end up being a pretty crazy weekend so we're just um, just taking a chance to get some thoughts and whatnot on, um, on how the gig went and everything. Okay, so uh, just before we started playing I, I felt really confident, I felt like there was a good mood in the tent and I was really excited to be there and I thought this could be a... Um, this could be a special great forsaken gig tonight and got out uh, we started Warriors of Light and yeah I pretty much felt it straight away the crowd was um, there, there weren't massive numbers in the tent when we were playing uh, it was probably about 50 people uh, but I could see them all shaking their head, bopping their heads and you know you could see some feet tapping and I could sense that some people knew the songs um, open up with one of Destin for Ascension, which um, I suspect a couple of people had at least heard that song on the internet. Um, so it was a good start and then we went into this day fourth and, and that was when I got really excited. I, I could see people singing along with the chorus which was a um, pretty special feeling when you write a song and you see people singing along with it. Uh, and the whole point of writing it is to be catchy. So. That was really good, and then from there it was pretty much they opened the floodgates for the rest of the set. We just, it's just a really good vibe on stage with the guys. Um, I was feeling as though we were playing really well. Um, later on, the guys um, said to me that they'd made a few mistakes and whatnot, but from my position out front of the band, it, it felt like the music was there. It was very easy to sing along to. I knew what was happening. Um, the crowd was really enjoying it as it went on. We, um, I got took the opportunity to give away a lot of CDs and um, T-shirts and just whatever opportunity I had, I'd throw out another disc or another T-shirt or give away some singles, and um, that was really good. I think I think that helped bring the crowd into it for us. And you know, by by the we only got to play six songs out of ten um, due to scheduling. Uh, which was a little bit disappointing. We'd been rehearsing a 10 song set list. It's a long way to go to play six songs. However, with these kind of festival shows, you've just got to do what you've got to do. Um, and in a way, it's better to leave people wanting more. So we finished up on North Wind, which was um, a really good rendition. People were going pretty um, pretty nuts during the middle bit, and there's a lot of cheering. And, you know, we made sure that. Um, you know, that the God was, was glorified through that song, which is effectively a praise and worship song, um, lyrically. So it was, it was sensational and it was great after the show to have a lot of people come up and um, to say how much they'd enjoyed the show, how energetic, how fun it was, um, how, how much they enjoyed the lyrics to our music. Um, we really do make an effort to glorify God through our lyrics and it's real uh, pleasing that, um, that people pick that up in the music. Um, I've always said it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing to do Christian music but I've always said that I want to be a Christian band. I've never shied away from that and luckily I've got um, four blokes in the band at the moment who, who support that vision of being an overt Christian band because as I've said you know, countless times in Monday moshes and web updates and interviews and you know the band is only only existing for the gospel so um, while we can have fun along the way and enjoy ourselves on tour and have a nice morning here and in the Sydney sun it's, um, it's basically the gospel that we're doing it for actually just looking around it would have been nice to have some of this weather Again today over the weekend, um, it was very wet and cold over the Blackstone weekend, and um, it was a credit to the organisers and the bands that everyone has ploughed on, and the show went on, 
as scheduled. So my conclusion on the weekend and on the show, that it was terrific. It was great to network with people and um, catch up with people, uh, talk with people from the other bands. Um, yeah, we had a really, really good time. And as far as tours goes, it's been pretty unstressful. And hopefully setting a bit of a template for the way we'll do things in the future of these kind of shows. So here's to many more. <laughs> It's actually been a, a really great trip. It's been a really good trip. Uh, we've, yeah, we've just had such a great time, and uh, I can't think of what I need to say. Uh, yeah, just um, I guess I should start with the gig. Um, the, the gig was awesome. Um, we had we had a really good response. We had um, yeah, a lot of people sort of joining in, jumping around, and a lot of feedback, a lot of encouragement from the audience, which is really good. I uh, just have just to, to, I think, amp it back a little bit, just sort of build up, and I mean, it's, yeah. And, um, and just a really good vibe, like, it was just a really encouraging audience, and, um, yeah, it was just so exciting. I, I was uh, drenched from sweat. Um, it was very disgusting. Uh, very, very disgusting. I just had a, a single sort of black shirt uh, on, and um, yeah, it was just not quite as sweaty as I got at my sister's wedding, which uh, three-piece suit about 40 degrees. That was really, really sweaty, but this was almost as bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, just a lot of fun and just running around. I kind of feel like I, I covered more ground in that so a half an hour set than I do in a half an hour indoor soccer game, which kind of says a lot. Uh, but it was just awesome. Um, and just playing with Rich, um, particularly a few times, just sort of really locking in and, yeah, that was wicked. And, uh, and, and with Simon, just, uh, yeah, it was, it was just really good. It was just really cool. Um, I think, yeah, it was just so good. Um, I was grinning from ear to ear for like two hours afterwards sort of sitting there watching all these other like, black metal and death metal bands but just going, man, that was awesome. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, it just... I'm just trying to think of what else I was going to say. I'm not a point. Um, <laughs> we, um, reflection on the weekend as a whole. Oh, okay. Uh, as far as the whole, the whole weekend, um, look, we've done Black Stop three times now. Um, and I have to say, this has been the best. Um, I mean, I've flown for all three, um, but it was just so nice going together as just us. Um, unfortunately, Simon wasn't with us for the, the trips, but uh, just having the band was, was really good. Um, and we just sort of chilled out, we took it easy, we, uh, we were just so relaxed. and. Um, it was really good. I'm staying at Mark's place. Hopefully, the place looks all right in the background here. Uh, it has been really good. Um, Mark has been awesome. He has been uh, such a great host, so welcoming of us, um, yeah, all of us, um, which is which is a pretty big ask actually. I mean, considering yeah, you end up with a big metal band in your uh, land room, sleeping in your land room, in your dining room, and your spare rooms and. Yeah, but um, but he's been amazing, and it's been an amazing, uh, amazing time here, just sort of chilling out and relaxing. And um, I, I don't think I'll actually forget though when he um, he came in and said, uh, you know, for a metal band, I'm really surprised. You know, the amount of times I I come in and you guys are playing a CD that isn't remotely metal. Um, that's probably because most of the metal was on their iPods and you know MP3 players and stuff, but. Uh, we had to sort of go through and pulling out his Foo Fighters and Nirvana CDs and all sorts of random stuff. Um, but it was actually cool just listening to some different music. Um, and yeah, just sort of, I guess even with friends, you know, 
people expect that we're always going to be listening to uh, something extreme. But it's cool just to chill out for once in a while. Um, look, Sydney's been fantastic this time. Um, the, um, the people have been really helpful, and, you know, just really kind, really friendly, and really encouraging. Um, yeah, just, I think probably one of the craziest things is um, actually just the weather. Um, and I've, I've only said this about 50 times to different people, but um, yeah, we arrived here on Wednesday about lunchtime, it was about 31 I think. Um, Thursday was pretty much about the same all day. Friday was really hot. Um, I mean, just getting from Mark's apartment um, to Stump, I just remember being hot. Hot and sweaty, just carrying all our gear and looking at from one end of the city to the other, from the south to the east, west, best side, west. Um, but yeah, just really hot. And then about, I think it was about 4 o'clock, 4.30 on um, Friday, all of a sudden it just bucketed, bucketed. And it has literally rained ever since. Um, we had a few patches here and there where it wasn't raining, but um, today, uh, this is the first time since Friday about 4 o'clock that I've actually seen some blue in the sky. Um, mental! Um, and I think the worst thing is that uh, we kind of figured, ah, it's really hot here, it's really dry, it's... Uh. So uh, when we go to Stump, we'll just take most of our hot clothes. Um, so I've, I had one pair of pants, um, not this pair, uh, and one hoodie and uh, everything. Uh, it was just kind of shorts and t-shirts and uh, yeah we got to stump and I was pretty much wearing the same pair of pants all weekend not sleeping in, I have pajamas but I'm not wearing them around to see bands, I'm sorry um, so it just yeah, just so not being prepared for the, the sudden and extreme shift in weather um, made things more interesting but um, it was awesome it was really awesome um, yeah, but look, when we, um, <laughs> each night we'd sort of get into the tent and kind of wonder what sort of damage has been done, and, um, was it Saturday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, um, we just, yeah, got into the tent and just thought, oh my goodness, last night was wet, and it was dripping a bit, but Saturday night was just flooded, the tent just puddles all over the place. Everything was just wet, wet. Um, I, I literally had my wristband and my, my black shirt, the one that was already wet from the sweat. It was eventually dried out, actually, both the wristband and shirt. Um, and I just sort of stuck them, sort of folded them up nicely and stuck them at kind of where my head basically was for um, when I was sleeping in the tent. And um, yeah, but it's Saturday morning, um, they were soaked. And, um, yeah, by Sunday morning it was just really bad. They were just totally drenched because they were just sitting in puddles like all day, all night, or whatever. Um, but yeah, awesome. Awesome. You gotta have some interesting stories to tell. I just want to first of all say that in reflection of this whole tour, well, trip to Sydney and back, which we call our tour 2009, it has been an experience that I would, I would never change, I would always do it. And I can't express enough how blessed I am to, to be teamed up with Vaughan, Elias, 
Matt and Simon to be that band Grave Forsaken. Um, just to think two months ago, Dave was the drummer, or just a little bit over two months ago, Dave was the drummer, and an absolute phenomenal drummer he is. And then there's little old me that the Lord's really opened up the door to allow me to become part of this band of brothers. So it's just it's such an amazing thing to be here now, um, taking part in such an event. The night was fantastic. Numbers were small, but look, you know, you've got to start somewhere. And I suppose whether you've got one or 100 or 1,000 or whatsoever, at least you're getting the gospel out to somebody, and that's that's really what I believe the band is, is a, is a missions band, going out there and sharing the gospel through our lyrics. And um, personally, I, um, I walked away not being nervous, but I think watching some of the other drummers in the other bands and how fantastically they were able to play I think that I let that get to me a little bit so when I did go out for my turn on the stage I um, tried to do some specky things a little bit and that on my on my part and my belief was a bit of an undoing because I did make mistakes during the set although the other members did not notice it um, I, I, I did and um, they're just things I'm going to have to improve on um, and what was also pointed out at a later date was my timing as well um, it's a bit up and down at times it was a little bit of a surprise to me because I thought I was a little bit better than that and this is just my own opinion, uh, honest opinion um, and I'm not saying that I'm right it's obviously something that I haven't seen or taken into concern um, and now it's been pointed out to me now I'll just have to work on that as well uh, the crowd really got into it um, Vaughan was fantastic from at the front as the lead, the lead singer and the leader of the band he really got the crowd into it as well Elias, well, you know, shreds what else can you say, he's just his magic on the guitar and um, he really let it rip on Friday night, it was fantastic Simon was great as well, Matt was great, they just all the guys did a fantastic job and I'm so proud of all of them um, at the end of the night it was really great to catch up with some people and chat fans of the band um, it's good to see that people were wearing the shirts and, and picking up the CDs and I don't think it, for me, it's not a, not a thing of, oh great, they're wearing shirts and they're buying the CDs or they're getting copies of the CDs for a pride thing like, well, look at me, well, I mean, first of all, I'm not on any of the albums, I haven't been with the band long enough to be on the albums, but it's more of a thing of, as I said once again, it's a missions field out there and and people are able to walk away and you know even if they did just get a, a t-shirt they can know who we are go onto the websites have a listen purchase the CD or you know go onto YouTube and, and things like that and, and watch live performances so you know and, and they're still getting the uh, the positive message through our music as well so it, it was uh, the weekend uh, overall was a very challenging one at times you got five grown men spending so much time with each other and we've been in Sydney all together about five days six nights and um, you know when you're in a place where you don't know much about you don't really have much in the way of the freedoms of having a car or your own place to stay it, it you're sort of living in each other's pocket a bit and you know I think we've really learnt a lot about each other um, over the last few days um, you know nobody's perfect we've all got a, a good th good sides and also a not so good sides and um, 
yeah, it's just it's good to get to know each other a bit more like that. Get to know yeah, what gets up the other person's goat and and so on. Because you know, I think we've got to be conscious of how we are around other people, uh, how we talk to somebody, how we react to somebody how we are as a person around somebody because sometimes we may do things that really annoy others and um, part of being a, a, a Christian with integrity is is being humble enough to say hey look I'm wrong I'm sorry that I did that and looking to improve ourselves as well and I think that's what we could, we've been able to take away from this whole period of time here in Sydney is that um, Although it may hurt a bit, emotionally it has been a bit draining at times, um, I think as a band, and personally myself, uh, I'm going to walk away from this a better person, a better man, a better Christian. Uh, but in saying that as well, we've grown closer together, or we're learning to grow closer together, I should say. and. Uh, we've learnt to not let the sun go down on a problem um, to be open with each other and um, to really deal with things in the correct way in the correct ways don't let things sit and don't let things lie but deal with the problem on the spot but also encourage each other as well while doing that because you can never deal with a problem without encouragement and, and love. I have to say that uh, this is the longest period of time I've been away from my wife and my children and it has been quite difficult because usually in situations like that I can turn to my wife and talk to my wife but I suppose this has given me more of an opportunity to talk to God about, about things. Going back to the actual festival itself, I saw a lot of great bands, I got to meet a lot of wonderful people. The event was a wet and rainy one, and one of the interesting situations that occurred was having some tents that weren't really waterproof. And uh, last night, not last night, the night before, on Saturday night, it really came to a, oh well, you know, a defining end when we found that there was lakes in, in our tent, so you literally had to row yourself into your tent. So um, that night I became quite wet, <laughs> quite cold, and had to deal with something, deal with certain things at one o'clock in the morning, so it was, it was a bit of a rough ride, but as I said at the start, I would never change it. It was an experience. We've, we're certainly gonna walk away from all this, learning something about it, and um, I really look forward for many more tours to come whether it be coming back to Sydney, going to Queensland, Melbourne, or Victoria I should say, South Australia, Northern Territory, or even around Western Australia. Um, I'm really looking forward to what God's got planned for us in the future. And as long as we put Christ as the centre of everything that we do, I'm sure that we're going to overcome anything that gets thrown in our way. And uh, I think that's the important thing we need to remember. The other big thing is as well is that the decision to keep me as a, as the full-time drummer for Great Forsaken will be made when we come back to WA and I'm, I suppose that uh, that news will be released within the next few weeks so um, we'll just see what happens there. I think it's great, I've had a fun time and uh, give glory to the Lord. Reducing even churches Watering down that little thing We are roaming on and wretched Stuff to death for money's sake The price of vegetables escalates Take away food becomes a staple Have you had your three burgers and fries today? System overloaded, unable to stem a tide of fat. Hospital cases are being turned away. Pathetic workforce, no match for machines. Get that dude an energy drink. We can't afford to have him nodding off. We'll never meet the order for these TV dinners. Move, move, move. Wasting power. Corporation taking hold. Fueling fire. Do exactly what you're told. Wasting power. You'd wrap
How do you think the gig went now is? Um, yeah, the gig on Friday night went really well. I really enjoyed it. I, in fact, think it was um, one of the best gigs we've done for a long time. Um, the gig was good. Um, Black Stump. Today at Black Stump um, wasn't so good. Um, it was raining and with my, with my health issues, I found it really uncomfortable. Stay, um, sleep in the tent. So I went to Sydney, somewhere where I could sleep in a proper bed. And that was sort of my um, Black Sun weekend experience. I'm really tired and exhausted, and I'm looking forward to going home. Uh, Oh, trip is in Ham. Yeah, I'm not quite okay with it. We're not all right. Um, no, no complaints from me. I'm pretty happy. We speak a message of wisdom among the mature, not the wisdom of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. We speak of God's wisdom, destined for glory before time began. None of the rulers understood it, for they crucified Christ. Oh, yeah. 
Thank you.